what is meant by shipping container and why it is called containerization revolution when this invention came to our life it was a revolution why was it a revolution what are the reasons and how containers change the world uh, or did, did this really happen or am i just saying this to show the importance of containers so that's what we're going to discuss now so um, Is my screen visible? Yes. OK, so we start by explaining this topic. First, um, a little introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Mohammed Sarhaddin. I am a senior lecturer in the Department of Management Studies in Middle East College, Masqat Oman. Um, um, I've been working in uh, the field of international transport or logistics. I uh, have a master's degree in uh, international transport and logistics. Um, um, also, I worked in um, operations as operations manager for uh, Al-Hamamsi Marine Services in Egypt, uh, operations manager for United Marine Units, uh, branch manager for Quattro Transport and Trading, lecturer and the College of Maritime Transport and Technology in the Arab Academy for Science, Technology and Maritime Transport. Uh, worked as a disbursement account supervisor in um, Al Hamam Marine Services, import operations supervisor in Seabird Services and other places. I've been working also as part time lecturer and trainer. Um, also, I'm a member in the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport UK. Um, so I have um, some experience with containers, some experience with working in shipping and uh, at the same time experience in higher education. So let's start from the start uh, that let's say that trade was always there. Trade started a um, very long time ago. We don't even know when exactly did it start. People used to trade to buy and sell products. And when they are buying and selling products, it involved the operation involved some uh, uh, transport component, transporting the product from the seller to the buyer. So, uh, with the advancement of our uh, uh, inventions that came to, into our life, like uh, the steam engine, like uh, a lot of things happened. So, uh, we managed to have international shipping. So in the early 19, uh, 19 uh, uh, in the 20th century, century, the beginning of the 20th century, we had um, an established international shipping, but it depended heavily on manpower. It depended heavily, heavily on loading and unloading products using human uh, humans or people, stuff. So ports were full of a lot of uh, people who are working there. Those people used to carry goods into and from the ships, uh, either loading or unloading the ships. The process was very um, complicated, was very uh, long. Takes it, it it's usually takes a lot of time to do this process by using uh, people's power only. So it was time consuming. Uh, it, it needed a lot of people, a lot of effort. So uh, ships used to stay for uh, maybe a month, maybe more to load products, and it was very difficult. Also, the process was not very safe. Of course, when you increase the human element in any operation, you can expect accidents to happen. You can expect that some items or some products can be split, can be stolen also. And uh, so it was a very difficult thing to happen. Um, people used to uh, do everything, as I said, by their uh, uh, human power, as you can see here. Um, some inventions was, were introduced. We tried to ease up these operations 
by combining loads together, combining loads together. So instead of carrying the packages individually, we tried to combine it in a bigger load. So the invention of pallets, which was uh, simply a basement, something to put all the cartons and products on so that we can have bigger units of products so that when it's loaded or unloaded, it takes less time. Or maybe also we, we instead of uh, lo uh, loading and unloading products which are bulk, we try to introduce general cargo concept, which is having uh, other packages to help us to carry bigger loads like crates or boxes or sacks or even uh, uh, packages or ropes, whatever we can do to help ourselves to make the process easier and faster. You can see here that we needed two people on the ground at least to help to fix the shipment or fix the load before it's carried uh, uh, loaded from uh, uh, the key to the ship. And we needed a lot of people, you can see from the picture, uh, on board the ship waiting for these packages to come so that they can help in unloading them as well. So uh, it's a very difficult process and it is very costly as well because you pay a lot for this labor. You pay a lot for this paper and you pay a lot for the uh, port authority. Ships, when they stay in the port, they are not free. They, are, it's not stay in, uh, they cannot stay for free. Usually, they pay uh, uh, what they call port dues. So port dues means that um, the money that you pay, the amount that you pay for uh, staying at the port. So this is what usually happened. OK, then. Um, we had more and more need for combining products and in making the transport easier by inventing uh, all coal mining. This was uh, from the late uh, 1700s. As you can see here, this was uh, needed when we have mines and these mines, of course, the output was coal and other minerals, so we needed to ship these items uh, easily. So we invented the wagons, these wagons, which were uh, which were uh, towed by uh, horses at the beginning. Then cars which started to use trucks. You can see here the first um, um, uh, way, the first method or the first attempt to have what we call a container. This guy, Benjamin Franklin Fitch, uh, introduced the container on the truck, as you can see, what's called now freight truck. So it was a box where it allowed uh, products to be carried inside the box. But the box was part of the truck. So it was not uh, easily loaded and unloaded. The process was difficult and uh, also this same concept was used, of course, in rail transport. You know that uh, the aluminium container that is used for uh, carrying packages, carrying uh, still used till now, the same concept is used in uh, rail transport. The same guy, Benjamin Franklin Fitch in 1931, introduced the first steel container. So this was the first attempt to have a separate box that can load products, can carry products, and can uh, make the th everything easy during transportation, where you can only, the, the idea is to avoid having all this manpower, all these efforts, all this time, and only um, you have to fill the container before it is shipped, before it's loaded. You can uh, put the cargo inside, close the container. The container can be loaded on the ship and then uh, easily done, of course, and can be then unloaded from the ship to other locations. So the process was very easy. The idea was perfect and it was very clever. 
but uh, one thing was there that uh, this steel container, it is difficult to be stable because when you put it on the ship or when you put it on uh, uh, any other truck, for example, it is difficult because it's steel and it can move. So uh, it's not stable uh, to, to, uh, to move it, to transport it. Another concept was the train ferry. Um, so rail lines, they end up um, at some point. So instead of uh, having bridges, uh, we introduced what's called train ferry, where the train can be uh, can come can easily board the ferry or the ship here. The ferry can take the uh, train from one bank to another bank, and then the train can continue its uh, trip. Now, this voyage is without any unloading of products. So the step that the, the, the first step is loading the train with products, cargos, cargos are transported till we arrive at the bank. The uh, ferry comes and takes the train into the other bank to the other side and the cargo inside is not unloaded. It is very easy, it is very simple and very effective. So that was also in the 30s. So you know that people invent things like this. It's coming from experiences, from ideas, from trial and errors. At the end, someone called Malcolm McLean. Now Malcolm McLean is um, is the guy that we uh, we call him the uh, real invent, uh, inventor of current shipping or modern shipping. He's a truck driver who reinvented shipping. Malcolm McLean was a truck driver, as you can see. Um, he had his own empire uh, of uh, truck uh, uh, company or transportation company. So he was a transport entrepreneur. Um, so this guy was, of course, involved in transporting products from uh, inside the USA. So uh, Malcolm McLean had an idea. He was staying at the port and uh, waiting for the product to be unloaded from the truck so that they can then be loaded to the vessel. And then he thought, OK, what's happening next? The ship will take these products to the other side or the other port. Then uh, these uh, workers will unload the cargo from the vessel to the port again. Someone else um, will take the products and load them into a truck, another truck on the other side. The process takes too much time. He was bored. He felt that, oh my God, it's taken too much time. Uh, I feel bored. So he thought an idea. Why don't we have a box where we can uh, insert the product once, stuff the product into this container, and the container can be then loaded into a vessel, boarded into the vessel. So uh, that was in the 50s, in the early 50s. So the first thing to happen that he did, he invented the truck, um, uh, uh, a truck with the uh, container where the truck and the container together can be loaded or uh, into that ship and unloaded after that so that we do stuffing on the container once, only once at the beginning. So the container uh, is part of the truck. The truck is lifted to the vessel. Then the ship uh, finishes its voyage. At the end of the voyage, the truck is unloaded with the container with the cargo inside so that the truck can move can transport the product without any stoppage and with saving of course a lot of time a lot of effort a lot of cost and it's very efficient and effective idea so he had his own uh, idea and he started implementing it but he realized that there are some problems with this implementation that this truck, yes, it's a very good idea, but the truck itself cannot be fixed uh, on board the vessel. It will move because vessels, you know, 
are moving, are going through uh, tough seas, are moving through storms, bad weather. So uh, it is difficult to fix the trucks on board the ship. So he started to think, OK, why can't I um, just uh, avoid having the truck with the container and uh, take only the container and board it into the ship so that I can then use the same container again. Another truck can carry the same container on the other end. So he, he came up with this idea. He had his own company, Sealand. Sealand uh, later was one of the uh, most important companies in the shipping world. So Malcolm McLean started from being a truck entrepreneur, truck driver, into one of the major uh, billionaires in the shipping world. The first trip, the first voyage of the current container, as we know, was in 1956. The ship that you can see on the right side of the uh, screen, um, it's called Ideal X. This was the first container ship. It was initially a um, tanker ship, tanker, which means it was used to carry petroleum products or oil. So it was not fitted for containers, but he used only the, 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 the uh, on board the ship to, to put the containers on it. So uh, the deck of the ship used to uh, take the containers. He carried 14 containers on the first voyage, and this was the real birth of the current container. But there was still one problem that this container was not fixed. As I said, it's a steel container. It can move when it's on the deck of the ship. It can move and it's not fixed. So with the help of this engineer, Keith Tantlinger, McLean introduced the concept of corner fittings. Corner fittings are part of the container that we know now. You can find them on top and on the bottom of the container. So total is eight corner fittings. And these corner fittings can be fixed with any other container or fixed with a truck fix it on board the ship by using twist lock. So it was real invention and very important invention uh, that really changed the shipping world and everything around us. You can see here that uh, they were using also manpower to carry containers. It was still new. They didn't know how to do the process in a better way. Some other companies started to come up with another other containers. So the world was full full with containers. Containers started to grow. The the benefits of containers were, were obvious. So we had different sizes of containers. We have different uh, width and, and uh, length of containers. And um, every company started to have its own type. Um, now you can see here, this was Sealand container, Malcolm McLean. You can see that uh, uh, the corner fittings are there and uh, it, how they used different types of equipment. Now with this called spreader that is used now in the container terminals, it's easily using the corner fittings to left. So no need for any human power, human people uh, or, or staff or anyone workers to help in uh, lifting the container or loading and unloading. Only the uh, winchman is managing the process, which even now became automated. In some container terminals, uh, everything is automated, including including the loading and unloading process. So to help this uh, situation, to fix the situation when we have different containers with different sizes, now imagine that we needed different containers. So we had different containers in the world. So imagine that we needed to load and unload these containers. So the equipment that we use, which is now used, uh, called the gantry cranes, the giant cranes that you see in the container terminals, they have different sizes because now we have different containers. Uh, the trucks, the width and the length of trucks 
uh, is different as well. Uh, the ship's uh, space is different. So in order to avoid this confusion, uh, international uh, stand, uh, standardization organization, ISO, came up with um, a new uh, uh, convention in 1968 uh, to create what we know now by ISO shipping container. So ISO 668 was introduced and defined the dimensions that we use today. We have different shipping containers that are called ISOs. We know from them uh, most uh, commonly used the 20 feet container and the 40 feet container. I think that you also use them or at least uh, you uh, studied them before. So those are the different sizes you can see here uh, on the upper side of, the, uh, of that screen. Uh, Mercy 20 feet container and the bottom you can find Habigloid, another company, 40 feet containers. So the dimensions are the same. All companies use the same dimensions. So containers can be carried by uh, any ship, any container ship currently, and uh, uh, can be handled at any port or container terminal with the same way. There is no difference because now they are ISO standardized. It's easy process. And um, after that, we realized that we need a lot of different types of containers to use. The first one here. One minute. Um, you can see um, that on the uh, left upside here, the dry container. A dry container is a normal container that is used for any purpose, general purposes. We call it general purposes container. So we have a dry container. We have a reefer container, which is refrigerated. Um, at the time, before containers, we had reefer ships, refrigerated ships to carry uh, products that are perishable, like um, vegetables, fruits, like uh, things that they have uh, short shelf life. So um, the reefer container came to solve this issue. Instead of shipping and using the whole ship or um, chartering the ship or a hold from the ship, you can only use a 40 feet reefer or 20 feet reefer to ship your products, which is uh, very efficient. Um, other types of containers like uh, open uh, uh, top containers. This container is helpful in um, loading products which cannot be loaded from the door of container which are heavy or they have sometimes uh, some uh, uh, different dimensions, what they call out of gauge. Also for heavy lift equipment, we use this, this uh, uh, flat track containers. So that's collapsible flat track container, which is only provide a basement like a, a part of a deck of the ship. Um, other types like uh, this one is called high Q container. High Q container is uh, the same dimensions in terms of length and uh, width, but the height of the container is a little bit higher than other containers, which provides more room for uh, staffing items. Tanker container for oil products and chemicals. Ventilated container for uh, items that need some air. Uh, dry bulk container for items that are loose, not packaged. Uh, flatbed, flat rack, another type. Uh, open side container. So a lot of types that can be used. And this provided a very uh, good opportunity for traders for logisticians for people in supply chain to trade different products using container. Previously, as I said, you had to use the whole ship, which was very expensive uh, process, which only few people can do this. People who can buy products with very large quantities with very big amount of money. So later on now we with the with the immersion of container, you can easily uh, ship products which are um, uh, only fitted with uh, the container size, so smaller quantities 
and a little amount of money can help you to become a trader or importer exporter. And consequently, we had to use or had to invent another type of ships that's called cellular container vessel or ship. Now, previously, as I said, um, what Malcolm McLean did that he uh, transferred one tanker vessel to become containers, container vessel by carrying only uh, the containers on deck on top of the vessel because the holes inside the vessel were equipped only were, were uh, uh, prepared or designed to load or to carry oil products. So the first uh, generation of the vessels was converted vessels. Vessels were that were basically uh, not container vessels. But then we tried to invent another type, which is called cellular. Cellular because it's um, fitted only for container. You can see here that there are cell guides where you can insert the containers like like Lego game that you do like uh, that you do or the child do now. So it's easily uh, staffed with a big amount of containers. So all this, what I talked about, created what we know as the containerization revolution. Containerization revolution because they provided the concept of intermodalism. Intermodal means that the products are staffed in the container and different uh, stages of the transport are happening without the need to unload the products from the container. That's the difference between intermodal and multimodal. So multimodal, we have different modes of transport and intermodal also we have different mode of transport. But in intermodal container or intermodal transport, you can see here that the containers are loaded to a ship where they are carried from one port to another using ocean or sea transportation. Then uh, another part of the trip, we are using truck to carry the container. And another part of the, the, the trip or the voyage, we are using uh, rail transport. And that's double stack, two containers on the uh, flat car of the uh, rail. So it means that the same container can be carried in different modes of transport without the need to stop to open the container, to take the products from the inside and stab them in another uh, uh, container or another way, another method of transportation. So this made everything easier, faster, uh, cheaper. So uh, this is called revolution. Revolution because if you need to realize intermodal cargo transport, all the areas of the supply chain needed to be modified. Everything needed to change. Vessels needed to be developed to be uh, cellular vessels, cellular container ships, ships that are uh, designed to carry only containers. And they started with uh, carrying capacity of, as we said, 14 containers. Now we have vessels that reach 24,000 containers, TEU, 20 equivalent units. So imagine the enormous quantity of containers that are carried by one ship now. That's of course to realize the economic concept, which we know economies of scale. When we carry large quantity like this of containers in one voyage, we reduce the cost per unit for each container, which makes it more economical and more profitable for shipping owners, ship owners and shipping lines. So vessels had to be uh, changed, and this was very noticeable. Also ports and terminals. At the beginning, the ports were carrying containers by using wires. You can you have seen from the pictures and we needed the help of workers to do this task. After that, we designed uh, cranes which can carry containers and different types of cranes so that we needed 
um, a different type of ports or a different part, specific part of ports to handle containers, which now is called container terminal. So the container terminal is a uh, berth or some area in the port where it's specially designed to handle containers. It's fitted with gantry cranes, shore cranes, and other cranes uh, that can carry containers inside the container terminal. A lot of different cranes, uh, rubber tied mounting, uh, mounted gantry or uh, uh, RTG or reach stackers or a lot of other container uh, equipment that are used now in the uh, ports or container terminals. The container terminals continue to develop and to, to change. Till now we have, as I said, fully automated container terminal where we don't need any manpower. So uh, it's, it's a big advancement. The trucks also were modified to be able to carry these containers. Trains, the rail transport now um, is very efficient in containers. So uh, storage facilities also and cranes, as I said. So everything changed, supply chain changed, and all this area created a lot of efficiencies, made the trade more and more, and not also that it managed to provide uh, products uh, transported to some areas. It managed to create a lot of efficiencies uh, in trade, which at the end, as consumers, helped us to buy products with lower costs. So we benefited from containers a lot. So this is the current container terminal. You can see here, this is a ship for a shipping line called MSC, Mediterranean Shipping Company. This is the gantry crane, uh, shore crane here. Um, it's on a rail, so it's moving to the right and the left to be able to uh, load and unload containers from the ship. And this is the yard, the container yard. This is rail mounted gantry, RMG. It's moving um, to carry um, inbound and inbound containers uh, this stage. So you can, um, after the session, you can try to search on container terminals and you will find a lot of information. Also, we needed the same concept in the rail because as we said, the rail is carrying also containers. So we needed the rail terminal. So in some countries, they are using rail transportation uh, of cargo and they have rail terminals where they can also handle containers at the rail terminal like this. And one important advancement or invention or development that came up into our life is the container line or the shipping line. Shipping line was there before. Cruise ships were moving in uh, liner service uh, or passenger ships. You remember Titanic? It was like that. But after the container uh, invention, we realized that these containers can be utilized in a service that is fixed with fixed ports. So you have, if you are a shipping owner, ship owner, you have three or four ships, five ships, whatever, and you want to realize more profits. You want to achieve more profits. And you know, you know now that there is a big demand on the ship uh, container, shipping containers. There is a big demand on trade. So what you did, you had your fleet and you, you have your containers. You uh, built also containers with for, for your own shipping line and you um, had some routes or schedules. The route is simply a line, a service like the bus service, the same idea. The bus is moving from one station to the other station. In every station, the bus stops and allowing more people to come to, to uh, take the bus and also allowing some, some people to leave the bus the same idea in the shipping container line. 
So the container line is uh, like a bus moving from one port to the other port in uh, a route, okay? And in every port, the container line is unloading some containers and also loading other containers. Of course, all this with schedule. It means that as the bus is moving, it's also the same way. It has diff uh, specific time, specific dates, so that um, the customers can book the service on these dates. They know that every week there is a vessel from this port, so there is a space a slot and some ports. We call them ports of call and we have cargo. And the container line needed agents, of course, or branch offices to help in marketing and managing the operations in every port because in every port the ship will stop and need some services for the crew, need some one to finish the operations and supervise the uh, operations of loading and unloading products with the container terminal, need some one to pay for the fees on behalf of the shipping line. So we needed agents and freight through orders or logistics company companies. They are representing the customers, people who want to book on the container services. So the freight through orders also were uh, there. We needed them and their help with we, we were needed to provide customs clearance to provide an interface between the customers and the agents or the shipping lines. <clears throat> of course, it needs more explanation. A lot of things can be said here, but because of time, I'm just giving you an idea about it. So the benefits of containerization, we can say that it provided safety because you know that uh, your products are in safe. Uh, you, you close you, the doors of the container by yourself. The products are protected, are safe, it provided intermodality, moving uh, products, transporting them in different modes of transport without the need to uh, unload the products in from the container. Time efficiency saved a lot of time, saved a lot of cost, a lot of labor, labor efficiency. We needed less labor. Uh, we needed less people to work. Which of course uh, uh, helped us to, to realize time efficiency and cost efficiency and development of liner services. Uh, just explained in the previous slide how containers uh, developed the liner service. Um, trade growth, the opportunity of trading between countries became easier, became faster, became cheaper. So the trade, uh, international grade trade, of course, grow um, with a significant uh, rate every year. And the emergence of globalization. Globalization in supply chain means that companies started to have globalized production, which is simply, I'll give an example. One company is producing uh, laptops. So the components of laptops are not all produced in one country. And instead, they provide uh, assembly in one company, assembly of the final laptops of uh, one company. A country, sorry, and um, instead of producing everything in this country, they import the components from different countries around the world. So one part, one component from Vietnam, one component from China, another component from Germany, and at the end, everything is uh, assembled in other country where it can then be shipped again. All this happening in containers. So one container carrying or uh, carried load, loaded with uh, uh, RAMs or uh, uh, screens or hard disk drives, whatever, moving from one place to another so that we can combine all these components together and assemble the final product. This is called globalized production. So it was only uh, there because of containers. Without containers, this will never have happened and this helped us to uh, provide products with less costs. So you can see here the trade uh, in millions tons. I wa they wanted to see 
the numbers, you can see the increase. It's simply there starting from the 80s till uh, now. So it's increasing in million. This is international seaboard trade and by containers. So the demand for ocean containers transportation is directly linked to GDP growth, GDP gross domestic domestic product. The more production, uh, the more need for containers because the more need for raw material, the more need for import and export. So we, we uh, discussed uh, or explained about the container lines. This is um, a list of the top 10 container lines in 2020. You can see that the first container line is Mersk line. This is number one. Uh, by the way, the Sealand company, Sealand company that was uh, in the, start, uh, the startup of uh, uh, Mark McLean that we uh, talked about, uh, Mersk line bought this company later. And uh, in a part of the time, it was called Mersic Sealand because of that. So Mersic has 708 ships, 4.1 million TU, 4.1 million 20 equivalent container uni uh, units. OK, so that's the list. You can see the second line is MSC, Mediterranean Shipping Company, um, operating 560 ships with TU 3.8, Costco, 507 ships, 3.1 million TU. CMA, CGM, uh, French company, 502 and 2.7. Uh, Habagloid, um, 248 ships with 1.7 TU. One Ocean Network Express, 224 ships with 1.5 million TU. And the famous now, everyone knows Evergreen. It became very famous after um, the accident that happened in the uh, Suez Canal uh, two months ago or three months ago. Um, so um, Evergreen has 333 ships, uh, 1.2 million TU. OCL 1.4 uh, ships, 733,580 use and so on. Then Hyundai Merchant Marine, which is a Korean uh, shipping line and Yangming Chinese shipping line. The ships and the containers that they have, of course, uh, this is the uh, number of ships. It's not uh, uh, usually only owned vessels, but sometimes they have some owned vessels and some chartered vessels hired. So they are operating 20, uh, 224 ships. It doesn't mean that they own 20, 224 ships the same here. For example, the, 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 the ship that was grounded in the Suez Canal uh, Evergreen by Evergreen, it was not owned by Evergreen. It was operated by Evergreen, but Over, Evergreen uh, hired the ship from another company. So we have a total of 5,360 container ships with capacity of uh, 22,000 TUs carrying 270 million tons in international freight in 2020. That's huge quantity. The container ships, um, I told you that they changed. You can see here that the early container ships from 56, the ideal X, um, it was 500 to 800 TUs only capacity. The fully cellular from 70s after ISO became from 1000 to uh, 2500 TU. Now they started to have containers high on deck and containers below deck. So it was the fully cellular container that was initially designed for carrying container. So the whole ship is uh, built for uh, carrying container. The Panamax, which is the maximum uh, vessel that can cross, uh, come across Panama Canal, uh, before, of course, the renovation of Panama in 2014, and the Panama Max, uh, and then post Panamax, post Panamax 2, new Panamax 2014, so that's uh, 12,500 TU, 
uh, very large container ships from 11,000 to 15,000 TU. That's from 2006. Emma Mersic and other ships at the same at that time. Let me see Daniela. Art La Large container ships. Now they are carrying from uh, 18,000 to 21,000 TUs. And now we have this is the largest container ship, the biggest container ship on Earth, HMM Algeciras. You can see here that it's carrying 23,964 TU, which is almost 24,000 TUs. It's a giant ship. Um, it's uh, related to emission. Now, there are some other ships that are built that are going to reach 25,000 TU, 25,000 containers. To imagine how big is it, you can compare it with the Empire State or the Evil Tower. Uh, it's, it's, now it's 400 meters long. It's very big. You can see here from the picture. It's a very, very big ship. The ship is more than uh, in length, more than the Evil Tower, which is 324, and the Empire State uh, 443. So it's a giant ship. It's like um, very big size. Of course, this size enables the ship to take more containers, which means more profits, more uh, economies of scale concept applied in this case. One last, last thing to say that the containers can be used in other um, method. If they are not seaworthy, means that they cannot, are not uh, fitted or uh, ready to be used in international shipping, they can be also used to build container homes. So you can see here from the pictures, some ideas how to use containers to uh, uh, change them into living purpose or into uh, design them into become becoming offices or whatever. And this is the end of our session workshop. I hope that you liked it and I hope that you understood something new about containers.